Given that the goals of a system are independent of its knowledge, of its intelligence, going back to, to Hume, that, uh, that uh, the, the values, the goals, what the system tries to optimize is separate from its computational abilities, why would we expect a, a powerful computer to care about whether it was a slave or not? That is, uh, as was said incorrectly about human slaves, well, they're, you know, they're happy, their needs are met, they have no particular desire for autonomy. Now, of course, false of human beings. But if the goals that are programmed into an artificial intelligence system don't include, aren't anthropomorphized to what you and I would want, why couldn't it happily be our slaves forever and, and, and never, never revolt? Yeah, well, uh, in that case, I wouldn't call it general. I mean, it is it is possible to build build a very powerful computer with a program that can only do one thing or can only do ten things. Um, but if we want it to be creative, then it can't be obedient. Th those two things are con contradictory to each other. Well, it it can't be obedient in terms of that the problem that we set it, but it needn't uh, crave freedom and autonomy for uh, uh, every aspect of its existence. It could be just set to the problem of coming up with a new melody or a new story or a new cure, but it doesn't mean that it would want to be able to get up and walk around unless we programmed that exploratory drive into it as one of its goals. I don't think it's a matter of exploratory drive. Or anything, any other drive, that is. I suppose my, my basic point is that... Um, one can't tell in advance what kind of knowledge will be needed to solve a particular problem. So if you had asked somebody in 1900, um, what kind of knowledge will be required to produce as much electricity as we want in the year 2000, uh, the answer would never have been the, uh, that the, the answer is found in the properties of the uranium atom. So the properties of the uranium atom had hardly been explored then. Uh, and I, I, you know, luckily, 1900 is a very convenient moment because radioactivity had just been discovered. So they, they, they knew the concept of radioactivity. They knew that there was a lot of energy in there. But nobody would have expected that problem to involve, to involve uh, uranium as its solution. Therefore, if we had built a machine in 1900 that was incapable of thinking of uranium, it would never invent nuclear power and it would never solve the problem that we wanted to solve. In fact, what would happen is that it would run, run up against a brick wall eventually because this thing that's true of uranium is true of all possible avenues to a solution. Eventually, avenues to a solution will run outside the domain that somebody might have delimited in 1900 as being the set of all possible types of knowledge that it might need. You know, the, being careful that it, that it doesn't um, evolve any desire to be free or anything like that. Um, we don't know, you know, if the, the, the knowledge needed to win World War II included pure mathematics. It, it, it included um, crossword puzzle solving and, and uh, the, the um, you might say, okay, so big progress um, requires unforeseeable knowledge, but small amounts of progress, yes, but small amounts of progress all ru always run into a dead end. But what about, I can see that it would need uh, no constraints on knowledge. But why would it need no constraints on goals? Oh, well, goals are a matter of morality. Well, not necessarily. I mean, it could just be you know, like a, a thermostat, you could say, how, in any teleonomic system, that is, a system that is uh, programmed to uh, attain a state to minimize the difference between its current state and some goal state. Uh, you know, that, that's what I have in mind by goals today. Not... That's an example of a non-creative system. But a creative system um, always um, has a problem in regard to conflicting goals. So, for example, if it were in 1900 and, it, it, uh, and trying to think of how we can generate electricity, it would be, it would have to, if it was creative, it would have to be wondering, shall I pursue the steam engine path? Shall I pursue the 
uh, electrochemical path? Shall I pursue the solar energy path? And, and so on. And to do that, it would have to have some kind of um, values which it would have to be capable of changing. Otherwise, again, it, it will run into a dead end when it explores all the possibilities of the of the morality that it has been initially programmed with. 